Hi, I'm Dr. Vaibhav Nasri. I'm a consultant neurosurgeon working at Gondia, Maharashtra. I just wanted to share my knowledge regarding how to read a CT scan as many of my friends told me that it would be really helpful for them. Uh, it, this is not for a neurology faculty or neurosurgery faculty. It is more for non-neuro people uh, who can, <clears throat> because neurosurgeons and neurologists, they basically know how to read all CTs and MRIs. So I'm making this uh, video to share my knowledge about how to read a CT scan. Let's start it. I'm just going to show a series of CT scans, how to read them, how to have a clin clinching diagnosis and how to manage further. Uh, we will make it a very short video so that uh, basic CT scans, the most common entities in our uh, neurosurgical faculty, uh, neurosurgical uh, problems. Uh, we we see the CT scans regularly. I just wanted to show the show these scans uh, on priority. Okay, so I am a neurosurgeon working at Gundia Maharashtra. So let's start with very basic. Um, uh, I I I call this a idli sign. This is a, a CT scan. I call is a call it a idli sign. This is a CT scan which shows a very typical shape of biconvex lens. Uh, you can call it an idli also. So that is extradural hemorrhage. Anything which looks like a banana, which it goes with the concavity of the skull. This is subdural hemorrhage. So I hope everybody understands what is extradural hemorrhage and what is subdural hemorrhage. Okay. So this is a very... Uh, very nice entity which is called as chronic subdural hemorrhage. If you see uh, any bleeding which seen on CT looks white. Anything less than white could be infarct or a chronic condition like chronic subdural hemorrhage. So if you see here, you can see a very nice, uh, you know, uh, chronic subdural hemorrhage. What happens if you see this image properly? This is a chronic subdural hemorrhage and below this are sedimented red blood cells. Sedimented red blood cells and some membrane formation here. Okay. So this is a chronic subdural hemorrhage entity in which the blood hemorrhage, will, the hemorrhage will never look like uh, white. It will look like black because if you uh, keep the blood in some test tube, the RBCs will be above and the plasma, sorry, RBCs will be down and the plasma will come up. So same, uh, you know, prob uh, things are seen on this CT. So this is a chronic subdural hemorrhage. Maybe you can call acute on chronic subdural hemorrhage. Okay. So this is another, another thing. Um, if you see here, uh, it's a very classical picture of contusion. Contusion always looks very small patchy like problem. This creates very problematic thing by causing mass effect or edema uh, compared to extradural hemorrhage or subdural hemorrhage. On first day, the patient will be okay, but second day, third day, patient will deteriorate because of the edema around the contusion. So I hope everybody can understand what is contusion, which is a very patchy like thing. Okay. So this is another CT scan, very classical. If you see anything white is blood. Anything white is blood. So here if we see this is sylvian fissure which consists of CSF. These are all basal cisterns. This is again sylvian fissure. These are all basal cisterns. So this is called as very typical subarachnoid bleed. Subarachnoid bleeding happens due to aneurysmal rupture and whenever you see these kind of bleeding you have to always advise a digital subtraction angiography of brain or a CT angiography of brain. Okay, so it, this is aneurysmal bleed with subarachnoid bleed. I mean aneurysmal rupture with subarachnoid bleed. Okay, so this is another picture. This is another picture of a CT cerebral angiography and you can see a very nice uh, aneurysm here. I just wanted to show you a, a you know how a CT brain angiography looks like. So you can see a very nice uh, 
the diagrammatic representation this is a 3d reconstruction yeah, i forgot to tell you you have to always write ct cerebral angiography with 3d reconstruction if you see a 3d reconstruction properly then only you can plan your surgery nicely okay so when it comes to trauma this is one of the most common entity which, uh, which we see on a day to day basis so a diffuse axonal injury a patient can present you with gcs3 also a patient can present him to you with gcs15 also in this uh, ct you can see a small patchy patchy blood like thing can you can see here so you can see it here like here 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 so patient can you know present to you with any of gcs they can be comatose also they can be fully conscious also so you have to be very careful in this you cannot write a ct brain to be a normal when the patient has got some concussion syndrome or something uh, they can always present uh, have a concussion injury uh, which is and ct will always show some diffuse axonal injury type thing. so coming to a different entity non traumatic bleeds that is called a spontaneous bleeds so uh, you can see a very nice ct of uh, you know a uh, hypertensive bleeds the patient will clearly say i have stopped taking medicines for 3 4 days for hypertension and uh, i have uh, suffered a right side paralysis and the patient is uh, uh, you know comatose or unconscious whatever you say so this is very typical site of basal ganglion bleed basal ganglion bleed typical site most common site is putamen and you can see you know basal ganglia internal capsule putamen area is this so this is a very typical site of basal ganglia bleed in which the patient will have a opposite side hemiplegia and uh, same side pupil if there is a uncle herniation okay so this is another bleed the second most common site of the bleed is second most common site of the bleed is so this is called as thalamic bleed so these are the lateral ventricles this is the third ventricle which is not seen here but if you see just next to the third ventricle here 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 this is called as thalamic bleed. the notorious thing about thal thalamic bleed is it goes inside the ventricle blocks the csf path pathway and causes hydrocephalus to occur which increases intracranial pressure again and you have to intervene with uh, external ventricular drain or something okay so this is one different entity like uh, this is one different entity where uh, you know this is different pathology this is a bleed this is you know both things are together if you see the black thing that's a infarct if you see the white thing here the smaller one that is hemorrhagic transformation so the, both the things are here this is called as venous infarct with hemorrhagic transformation in such circumstances you have to advise a ct angiography or mr angiography so the ct angiography what we have seen here you cannot see if you see here the transverse sinus the sigmoid sinus everything is seen but on this side nothing is seen so this is because of the venous uh, occlusion the dural venous sinus thrombosis causing venous hypertension leading to venous infarct with hemorrhagic transformation so i hope you understand this scan also okay this is a diagrammatic representation how a ct venogram looks like supraserial sinus inferior serial sinus uh, then vein, vein of ganglion malformation and then straight sinus uh, here you can see sigmoid sinus and transverse sinus everything okay so uh, as we have discussed it earlier also anything which looks anything which looks black that is either infarct or edema so here you can see a mca territory infarct here you can see a mca territory infarct this is called as aca territory this is mca territory and this is pca territory so infarct is always territorial you have to understand infarct is always territorial the edema or this, the blackening will be seen in a particular you know territory so you have to always understand and uh, uh, because this is very black this is a chronic thing the infarct must have occurred at least in you know, a 3 or 4 months back and this is seen on ct the best modality to see any infarct is mri not ct in emergency circumstances 
okay so importance of uh, importance of uh, ct in uh, brain tumor conditions so can we see here that uh, uh, so you can see a cp angle meningioma and it is a contrast enhancing contrast enhancing it is enhancing it is taking up the uh, contrast uh, the i die which is uh, being pushed intravenously so this is again one uh, i and again one meningioma you can see here this is a sphenoid wing meningioma this is a convexity meningioma this is uh, not exactly you can call meningioma but there is some hyperostosis for which you can see okay so whenever you go give a contrast in ct the if there is any tumor it will uptake the um, contrast which is being given intravenously okay this is a very common entity which is again seen in our uh, um our region okay so uh, there are many people who come across uh, having some uh, dirty water because of that uh, water intake uh, you know you can develop a neurocysticercosis thing so any ring enhancing single lesion or a multiple lesion you can see a ring enhancing lesion can you see a very small ring enhancing lesion and because of this there is some edema also black color edema also so i hope you understand ring enhancing lesion surrounding edema is called as neurocysticercosis especially when it is a starry sky appearance you can directly come to a diagnosis it is neurocysticercosis the treatment will be first line albendazole on steroids if not then operate okay this is a very nice example of starry sky appearance you can you can see multiple you can see multiple you know ring enhancing lesions this is a very nice example of neurocysticercosis maybe this is a calcified dead cyst okay this is one very common uh, entity which is seen our in our country uh, so can anybody you know anybody can come to a conclusion there is some problem what what problem is going on the ventricles are getting enlarged what is happening here there is a hydrocephalus which is setting the horns are getting cupped okay the the occipital horns are getting bigger and you can see a very nice tumor blocking the foramen of monroe causing hydrocephalus this is called as colloid cyst this is called as colloid cyst okay very common very common to remove that you have to go you know like uh, go inside the ventricle remove this tumor and come out very simple surgery and a very satisfying surgery the patient lives a normal life after that okay so uh, again a very common entity hydrocephalus there are few four five definitions when you have to tell that there is some hydrocephalus going on inside the brain the temporal horns will be getting bigger the temporal horns will be getting bigger the third ventricle will be getting bigger and there will be cupping of frontal horns there will be cupping of frontal horns and there will be some you know oozing you know some oozing will be there through the horns so that at that time you have to tell there is a hydrocephalus going on and there is a raised intracranial pressure and you have to intervene at that time okay i hope you have enjoyed basic ct scans which i try to you know make this video for my friends and my juniors and my colleagues whoever wants to understand and listen how to read a ct scan i have made it a very simple video uh, i've done my best thank you uh, maybe if uh, if i get time i'll uh, make more such videos to uh, share my knowledge about uh, radiology thank you thank you so much